Everybody, this is Ed with Call Me Mr. Broadstreet. Hope you all remember me. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, delay with this uh, latest video here, but I wanted to go ahead and do uh, part three uh, of the Imagine 1988 uh, film. Uh, so, in kind of to recap, in part one, uh, I reviewed the uh, film itself. Part two, I reviewed the soundtrack. So, part three, well, the book right here. And of course, I'm going to have uh, shown probably a couple uh, quick photos of the book in the uh, intro to the video. So there's no real script to follow with this. Um, what I just wanted to say is that this is a very nice book with a lot of uh, great pictures. It's definitely a good companion piece. If, um, if I'm being honest, I think get the film and the book together. If you can find the book, uh, with this book, I really forget where I got it from. I'm going to be completely honest. I, I don't know... It could have been a Tower Records, it could have been a gift from somebody, I think. Uh, it could have been a Barnes & Noble, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's got a lot of really nice photos. Uh, what I'll do is do a voiceover uh, with some of my favorite photos from the book. Just a few, not to give the, the whole thing away. Uh, but if you could find it, I definitely recommend it. I highly recommend it. So I'll see everybody uh, after my little uh, audio tour of the book, as it were. So... Stay tuned. I'll be back. Okay, well, here we are. We're actually at the pictures portion of the book. Now, looking at this photo right here uh, from the book, you can see it's the early Beatles, uh, 1962. Ringo's just joined the band, I believe, and of course, this is after the whole uh, Pete Best fiasco. Um, basically, the folks were saying, uh, Pete forever, Ringo never. It's hard to believe there was actually such a time that you know folks would have preferred pete best nothing against pete best himself i'm sure he's a very nice fellow um but you know obviously ringo fitting in so this is very early in john's life um as i'm looking at the photo here obviously 1962 they're very clean cut i'm sure back then it looked very very controversial um but you know just look at how clean cut they all look i mean they're wearing the shirts the ties they were just coming out of the leather jackets uh, from the Hamburg time period. So again, uh, you know, we just, um, throughout the book, we're getting kind of a glimpse of, of John's life. It's uh, following the film, obviously, you know, following the soundtrack, there's obviously the theme of, you know, his entire life from birth uh, all the way up to its all too short ending uh, in his life. So just kind of admiring the photo a little bit. A very nice black and white photo. I'm sure this has been in quite a few books since this particular book came out in about 1988 or so uh, after the film was done. Um, Ringo kind of shaking his head back there. John's looking back. I'm sure they're all keeping time. I mean, at the most, I think the oldest one, uh, Ringo and John, were probably all of 22 in this photo, if it's 1962, which I believe it is. Um, so we're kind of segueing into the next photo. We're going to get a little bit of a different look. It's going to kind of skip ahead in the timeline. Uh, very much ahead in the timeline, as it were, when we come up to it in a moment. There we go. Now this photo, obviously this is from the Get Back slash Let It Be slash Abbey Road era. On the left, you're seeing the photo. The Beatles are performing on top of the... Uh, Apple Studios. We've seen this most recently in the Peter Jackson Get Back documentary. Also, uh, pretty sure it was part of the Let It Be film from 1970. Beautiful color photo. Just take a minute to admire that. And of course, on the right, if my memory serves correct, uh, memory almost full, this Paul's 2007 album, <laughs> a little inside joke for the hardcore fans out there. Uh, photo on the right, I believe that's from the last photo session that the Beatles did. It was only seven years after the 1962 photo session they did in the previous photo. So in seven years, their look, the music, everything had changed very, very dramatically, uh, as we see. 
And I didn't want to include a lot of the Hard Day's Night or a lot of the um, psychedelic stuff. I mean, there's a lot of photos in the book. These are just selections from the book. Uh, I'll apologize for some of the angles ahead of time for this. Uh, it's a large book, and it's kind of hard to photograph and to center. I did the best I could uh, with centering everything, uh, obviously through the magic of editing yeah, and everything like that. But yeah, just just really like this photo. It's just a very nice photo. I know, again, it's popped up in different places in different books. Um, but again, 1988, you've got to figure that, you know, not a lot of material, not as much as we have now online and subsequent books that have been released. So the material in the 70s and 80s wasn't quite as prevalent for Beatles fans, Beatles researchers. I mean, now you click on something and obviously you can find any image within mere seconds from any time period in the whole entire Beatles history, uh, including the group and the solo years. Now we're coming up to next photos. These kind of represent John Lennon's Lost Weekend slash 1976 uh, time period. Uh, the photo on the left, it's a very famous photo. Um, sure, a lot of the hardcore fans already know where I'm going with this. Uh, but for anybody that's kind of new to the Beatles, uh, that's a very famous John Lennon at the Statue of Liberty, photographed by Bob Gruen. John's wearing the button on his coat. That's from the Walls and Bridges album, 1974. Um, trying to remember the exact timing of when this was taken. I don't know if this was November of 74. That I actually could look in the book, but let's see. It's... Uh yeah, you know what, as I'm looking through the book, it uh, doesn't quite say, actually, on that particular page. Funny enough, as I'm, as I'm looking through, as I'm recording this, on page 190. But anyways, it's uh, really nice, you know, uh, just to see. Very famous photograph. Uh, the photo on the right, that's when John's getting his green card. I know you can't tell by the caption, but of course, as I'm reading along in the book itself, as I'm thumbing through, hoping I don't run out of time, July 1976... John gets his green card uh, officially from the uh, United States. So he's officially a uh, legal permanent residence and could have applied after five years for full U.S. citizenship had he wished to. That was just quite a battle in and of itself. And of course, in between all this, their son Sean is born. Uh, so we're going to actually see that in the next photo uh, as well but just uh, take a second to just admire really great photography here as i said so we're kind of getting closer to now the dakota years uh, as it's going to be in the next photo one of my favorite photos right here if you really focus in on it it's this otherworldly light uh i think although yeah, I mean, it's really just a TV set. That's that's really what it is. Um, but, you know, so again, you're getting the family. This is definitely from the 1980 period. You can tell John's kind of looking a little skinnier. If you pause it, if you zoom in on the photo, he's kind of wearing more of the square glasses, which he was adopting more towards the end of his life. Uh, him and Yoko looks like deep in discussion, or maybe not so deep in discussion. I don't know. Uh, could be just talking about anything. Sean kind of playing in the background. Of course, the TV is on. Um, one of several of their apartments in Dakota. I mean, that's just a massive amount of property that they uh, that they accumulated over this entire time period. So really, I mean, just one of the most well-documented lives. I mean, if you think about it, this is pre-internet, pre-Instagram, pre-cameras everywhere. And yet, you know, we have so much... Uh, photography and so much video and audio footage of John uh, throughout his life. Uh, I think I read it somewhere and I can't remember where. He's arguably one of the most documented people of the 20th century. So it's just all the more amazing to, uh, you know, to think about. But yeah, just a very, you know, wonderful photo. I've, I've always liked this photo. I like the lighting of it. I like the kind of the contrast. Uh, it's definitely, uh, looks like the window shades are drawn, so I don't think it's quite a nighttime photo, but it definitely definitely has that feeling. It almost could look like a late night scene. Um, and of course, uh, you know, throughout his life, John was a pretty big TV watcher, especially in the late 70s, uh, during the time when he was still recording demos and still recording on his guitar and stuff, uh, despite uh, 
Despite thoughts or opinions to the contrary, he was still busy making music, just not releasing anything. And here we go. Really one of my favorite photos of John. Uh, 1980. Uh, and yes, you can tell it's 1980, even though he's kind of got a Beatles cut going on. And with this particular photo, I mean, he's there, he's composing. At the end of his life, he kind of went through every single look of his life. Within the last year, especially, is, is really what I mean, within the last year of his life, you look at pictures from 1980, you'll see every look, practically, that John had before. He went through that entire look within almost the 12 months, the nearly 12 months he got to uh, live through in 1980. Uh, nice little picture on the right, too. I just think that's a nice picture of the office. I mean, it's very hectic at the time. It's uh, fall of 1980, according to the book. I mean, it's... You know, they've got all the uh, records and all the memorabilia and everything. That's kind of the offices on the basement of the Dakota. So it just kind of shows John. He's there. He's making his music. He's following his muse. But it's followed by the bustle and activity because they're promoting the Double Fantasy album. It's about to be released in November. This is, again, probably fall, uh, late summer, early fall of 1980. And, you know, things are really picking up steam. Uh, Promotion-wise, it's John's first album of material within five years. So again, uh, you know, we're just getting to see kind of a glimpse of that. I'll just take a moment to just admire the photo. Just love the contrast, the light of the photo on the left. It, it captures his essence perfectly, I think. So again, I don't know what song he's recording here exactly, but, um, you know, rehearsing recording something you know he's he's definitely working on something and it's it's kind of a famous photo kind of a famous latter-day photo of john so we get to see in the next photo here now here we go john and yoko they are in the back courtyard area of cafe la fortuna cafe la fortuna uh it was on i'm trying to remember if it's west 71st street i think around the corner from the Dakota. Sadly, it closed in 2008. I got to comment on a story in the New York Times. So if you look that story up, you're actually going to see my comment on there. Um, you know, it was really sad. The owner's wife had passed away uh, prior to 2008. They tried to keep the coffee shop going for a while, but it's an all-cash business, and as of 2008, everything was just going more rapidly. Rents were going up after so many years. Really one of uh, John and Yoko's favorite places to go. Still hers, you know, after uh, his passing. But especially John, I think this might have been one of his favorite tables, if not his favorite table. Uh, the favorite table that um, the cafe owner had, they actually gave it to Yoko um, after they closed the shop down. So I know she has it somewhere. Could be in an apartment somewhere. Or it could be in one of the many unused apartments. It could be in archival warehouse somewhere who knows um just a really nice photo i mean okay maybe the cigarette smoking isn't such a good thing now i mean with over 40 years of hindsight but still just uh you know that's that's kind of john's look as as he's going from the 1970s into the 1980s um taking a break from i'm assuming recording promotional material at this point as uh, is, is what we're uh what we're seeing and that finishes the tour, so hopefully you enjoyed some of these photos. And we bring you back to the outro. Alright everybody, I'm back. Well, I hope you kind of enjoyed that little tour of the book. Um, and if you're enjoying the content, again, I appreciate uh, all the current subscribers, any new subscribers out there. Uh, so make sure to please just give a uh, thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Uh, I'd also be remiss if I didn't say a little bit at the end of this video, at least, a couple, uh, you know, Beatles news items, as it were. Uh, as I'm taping this uh, February 18th, um, giving a shout out to Yoko on her 89th birthday. Um, you know, she's still with us, you know, thank goodness, and hopefully she's enjoying it with uh, family and friends. Of course, uh, hopefully having maybe a chocolate cupcake with chocolate frosting. I mean, live on the edge. Why not? Uh, God bless. And of course, um, Paul just announced his tour as of today, as of Friday, as I'm uh, filming this. So he announced it as the Got Back Tour. 
I get the funny feeling that Get Back is going to be on the set list. But I'm kind of glad for at least a decently named tour for once, at least in the recent history. I mean, it certainly beats some of the other titles out there. I think uh, one of the more recent ones was uh, Freshen Up. Got Back or Freshen Up? I'm going to go to Got Back if I, if I possibly could. Um, you know, if I were able to. But, um, you know, that's... Uh, I've gotten to see Paul twice myself in 1990 and 2005, so that's uh, that's just about it. But just to wrap it up again, this Imagine book, again, just very essential as I would rate it. Really pick up a copy if you can, um, even if some of the photos are kind of repeating from other collections. It's always nice to have these photos of John. He's very much missed. I'm sure he's missed on today as every day, really. Um, it just shows why we love John so much and his music and why his uh, music and words will still continue to matter um, as time keeps going on. So again, just signing off. Um, my next review, I'm hoping to uh, get back, no real pun intended, to, uh, to George, to something from George for the uh, next review. So until then, be safe. Uh, again, give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and I'll see everybody in the next video.